Hello Retroburn here, part 5 of our Let's Play UFO Alien Invasion. Loading. So, uh, the guys at UFO AI have been kind enough to um, feature my Let's Play on their homepage. Thank you Martin and company, I really appreciate that. And uh, I've I've received several comments from forum users Tall Troll and YouTube user Danin MX, and both have given me very useful tips. Danin has uh, said that uh, I should just like UFO uh, XCOM, I mean XCOM Enemy Unknown, the game from Firaxis. Um, you should really rush. And build more coverage for the entire world because that's going to um, make you more efficient at spotting UFOs before they even you know land and uh, murder civilians so it's a kind of a satellite rush thing that the first game forces you to play I mean enemy unknown forces you to play the one from Firaxis but this time around in UFO AI you don't have to build satellites, but you have to build uh, bases from uh, uh, to cover the entire globe. But there's a problem right there. Number one is our funds. I don't think it can support that with 144,243 credits. And the second thing, which is equally important, is our um, employee pool. Because our candidates here are... Uh, most of them are newbies, so I don't think that if I build a second base right now, they would be able to defend it from an alien attack just in case a party lands and you know crashes the base. So I think, and I may be wrong because I'm a beginner at this, that um, constructing a new base at this point would be very unwise because we don't have enough personnel to defend it, and I don't think. I think I trust auto resolve mechanic if we have too few personnel guarding the second base. So there's that. And another another thing from Tall Troll is that um, he said we can shoot through walls. So I kind of for for uh, I forgot about that. In my first playthrough, I did detect that you could spot aliens from behind walls by using the IR goggles. I'm not too sure, but I'm fairly sure I was able to see through walls using a certain equipment. I think uh, those were the uh, infrared goggles. So let's try that in our second mission. So I'm in parts 3 and 4. You've seen me shuffle wounded personnel out of the dropship and um, replace them with fresh ones. So I'm going to do that now because uh, our aircraft is full of people with wounds so as you can see Carlos Lee has only 69 over 98 and I think we've got more wounded oh it's only Carlos so I'm going to swap him out and put another one in so in parts 3 and 4 I, I've al already showed you that and while it's very engrossing for me I know it's going to be a uh, very boring for those of you who are watching this video so I'm going to skip that part and um, cut this video short here and then I'll continue when I fully equip all my soldiers and put fresh ones into the fire birdie so I'm going to do that now cutting this okay so we've swapped out one wounded soldier for a fresh one and we've also replenished our smoke grenade supplies that's also one thing that Tall Troll told me uh, you should use smoke grenades to minimize your casualties uh, or injuries and also I've queued up production for more smoke grenades and place it third on the queue because I think we're going to waste more SMG magazines we're going to eat through these so yeah, third on the queue. And we've also inspected our research. We still have a long way to go for our continuous wave laser operation to be completed. 
and so we'll start and look for trouble again and speed things up okay work begun and smoke grenade um, it's too far away I think let's try to intercept it um, should I save yep I should save here and let's try to intercept that with a stiletto but I think it's too far away but we'll see I am going to reload if our engagement proves unsuccessful because at this point in time we are strapped for cash and we can't afford to lose an aircraft so forgive me if I you know cheat the engagement is over water so yeah that's one lost UFO we can't retrieve anything from that but at least they won't be terrorizing any civilians so there's that has refueled okay okay we paid 8800 credits and we've got another UFO we now have 506,191 donations are happy with our performance so they gave us a, a bonus for that month so we are now in April we're going to try to intercept that one too we're going to save again um, I'm sure this game has a quick save key but I'll I'll take care of that in the next gameplay video. So we'll see if we can intercept this sucker. Living quarters finished in Phalanx 1. Let's take care of that. So um, we now have capacity for 60. So I'm going to add in more scientists, but I think yeah, we've still got two days left for the laboratory to um, open. So we can't do squat right now, so let's head back to that engagement. Booyah! Cool. Save that again. UFO lost to sea at sea. So nothing interesting there. Okay, lab finished. We can now hire more scientists. We have space for 10 more, but the thing is we can have um was this We have space for yeah, okay, so we'll hire more scientists. Hire the whole lot of them. Oh, okay, so we now have um, a larger scientist pool. So um, we'll hire 10. I lost count. <laughs> what? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we'll assign them all to. Yeba. Yeah, Okay, there you go so we now have no more idle scientists we have to, uh, blah, blah, blah. what's wrong with me we have 20 of them and in our production we still have a space for how many what three zero Okay, so we have we still have a day left for the other workshop to open. So there's that. Mm hmm. So I'm not too familiar with the with this game stack tree, so I don't know what branches will open up once we research continuous wave laser operation. But I think it's going to open up. Um, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's going to open up a tech tree for our aircraft's uh, offensive armaments. So after that, I'm going to research Alien Origins because that's, uh, I think, 
I mean, knowing what we're up against. But I think Alien Origins is, has got something to do with where these aliens are coming from, so I think I'm going to research uh, this Alien Autopsy Taman thing, so I'll know um, what we're up against in the battlescape. I think this has got to do something with endgame um, research, so I'm going to prioritize this one, and then after this, I'm going to research Alien Origins. So, yeah, nothing to do here. We'll speed up time again. Okay. Uh, workshop is done. Let's see if we've got space for 10 more in the workshop. Uh, but I think our living space is. Uh, yeah! We can hire 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten workers! Haha! -ha. So that's going to speed up our production. This game automatically um, places them to work on what whatever we've queued on our uh, production lineup. So nothing to do here. So let's speed up time again. There you go. Save. Send our stiletto again. What? Uh, was that successful? Aircraft. Okay, they're still alive. Research. Base defense laser turret. Uh, aerial laser cannon. Uh, things have been proving to be a series of tricky shoots, so I think our aircrafts are our aircraft is doing fine. Our stiletto, useful little thing right there. So we'll research this one. So what do we have here? We've recovered a new alien corpse from the battlefield. We should begin dissection and assessment as soon as possible. Sincerely, Dr. Connor. Okay, cool. Nice. So, yeah. We'll have our team of scientists do research work on this one. And I think all our veterans are... Yep, they've all healed. But let's give our newbies a go. Save again. Um, speed up time. Smoke grenade is finished. Production queue. Assault rifle, right shotgun. Uh, incendiary grenade. Armor. Craft items. Missile launcher. Mm. Okay, we'll queue two of these up just for the heck of it. Seventy hours each. Speed up time again. Okay you of the buggers saving so we can um man wait no this thing will obviously head out to sea so we'll go after this one there you go Okay, and our mail client is beeping, so, um, okay. Commander, during autopsy of the alien corpses we've recovered, my team and I uncovered some peculiar machinery implanted into the throat of the alien specimen. It consists of two metal spheres located on either side of the brainstem, connected directly to the windpipe by way of a small tube. The windpipe itself is protected by some manner of valve or filter. 
we believe this in this interconnected apparatus may be some kind of breathing equipment or, or a breather or even something else entirely. We're not sure how it works yet. I'd like your permission and funding to examine these items more closely than our autopsy would allow. At this point in the war, anything that enhances our knowledge base about the alien threat is useful, and we may discover critical clues about alien technology and biology. Certainly, we need to find out what the aliens breathe before we can accommodate them in our containment unit for any period of time. Commander Navarre and his team will be assisting us on the technical side. He has committed his full support to the proposal. Okay, sincerely, Dr. Connor. Mm. Hey, we've got a truckload of mail to read. <laughs> so, we're reading. Um, Commander, my team and I have completed our autopsy of the grey body we recovered. Here is my summary of our findings. When Commonwealth troops first arrived in Mumbai, confused and apprehensive, they were swarmed by crowds of screaming locals, terrified out of their minds and desperate for protection. Most of the soldiers didn't even speak the language, unable to understand what was said when they asked what was wrong. The civilians simply cried, Zurta Alma, I'm not too sure how they pronounce that, the Hindi term for evil spirit or demon. Under fire, the term quickly shortened to Tama, and by the time the, sh the shooting was over, it had further mutated. Everyone had settled in Taman as the word that described the grey nightmares that had slaughtered them. The name still remains, but we can now say with confidence that these aliens are made of flesh and blood rather than fire and darkness. First and probably most interesting is the fact that, these, uh, that this creature looks almost human. Two arms, two legs, a torso and head, bipedal locomotion, visual, olfactory and auditory organs all in the same general location. The subject's hands and feet have three long digits, one of which, the thumb, is opposable. The species is on average shorter than humans and possesses a thin, almost delicate frame which belies their toughness. The subject has a very simple set of vital organs, heart, lungs, liver, and so on. It lacks most of the redundant or obsolete organs humans have carried through our evolutionary history. Biologically, the most interesting part of the subject's internals is the digestive tract. The creature has a total of three stomachs whoa, meant for the digestion of very tough plant matter. It is incapable of digesting meat of any kind. This implies that, wherever they come from, the tamans are herbivores feeding on some kind of plant life. This finding has comforted some of our more excitable staff. At least we know that the aliens aren't harvesting us for meat. There is a complex there's a complex set of implants in the subject's throat that will require further research to be fully understood. I will send you more detailed analysis along with the research proposal. The large, overdeveloped eyes of the Taman with a natural light vision. It has special irises that protect the retinas from bright light such as sunlight. But if a sudden blast of highly intense illumination, ooh, flashbangs, were to hit the retina before the iris can adjust, it could cause prolonged or even permanent blindness. A flashbang, yay, yeah, guess right, may be highly effective there. So I'm guessing that the flashbang will reduce these guys' TUs, allowing us to move to their general location without threat of being fired upon. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The grayness of the skin is a particularly curious feature. This, it is actually caused by the secretion of trace amounts of silicon, which hardens over the simple inner, skins, inner skin to provide a kind of natural armor. This makes a salmon fairly resistant to impact and heat. Okay, so flamethrowers, bye bye. From our analysis, we can conclude the following. Salmons have a natural resistance to bullets and blunt trauma, but not enough to render such weapons combat ineffective. Their skin easily disperses small to medium amounts of heat, but prolonged exposure to a flamethrower or incendiary compound will do the trick. Okay. Lasers will do slightly less damage than normal. Though the body is limber and elastic, the salmon's internal organs are badly protected against concussion, which makes them particularly vulnerable to the shockwaves of explosive organs. Further study has ruled out other wild-eyed theories. Though the salmon's appearance is very similar to that of humans, almost enough to imply a kind of relationship, they seem to be more a case of convergent evolution than a blood relation. 
There are very few similarities between the Taman gene sequences and that of humans, and the structure of chromatin in their DNA is several orders of magnitude more complex than ours. This seems to preclude a, a hypothetical common origin. In combat, salmon present a significant threat. They are highly agile and can wield a variety of weapons with great accuracy. Besides serving as soldiers, they fill many specialist roles in the alien war machine. Positions in which Taman seem to be the most numerous. Complex weapons and advanced armor are often wielded by Tamans than any other species. This is more other species. We haven't seen anything yet. Right? Yeah. This is most likely due to their large brain sensory organs and delicate manipulators. Whether or not the Tamans are the grace of all UFO abduction stories, I couldn't say. But it seems extremely unlikely. Phalanx has never been able to verify a single report of alien activity since the 1950s. The UFOs we're seeing now are certainly not flying saucers. If they could have invaded Earth a century ago, why wait until now to do it? It doesn't really add up. But then, who can know the motivations of an alien mind? Okay, this is kind of exhausting, so um, we'll read all these later when we're going to research um, these ones. Uh, except for this one, we've already covered this, so yeah, let's read this bit. Commander, I'm extremely pleased to report that our projects have been successful. I've included images of our prototype laser weapon, which achieves continuous wave output at a smaller scale than has ever be been achieved before. The practical solution didn't lie in futilely trying to create bigger battery packs, but rather in using radical miniaturization technologies to lighten and scale down existing chemical powered laser components. Chemical lasers have been in use for a very long time and have been part of experimental weapons programs since the late 20th century. But they've always suffered many problems. The only types of chemical lasers with real military promise were limited to those of tank-mounted laser cannons or ship-based anti-missile batteries. Now, however, we at Phalanx have built a conventional laser cannon in miniature. Despite small size, it is fully capable of handling the deuterium fluoride reaction and containing the toxic waste products without danger of contamination. Let me give you a brief description of the inner workings. Inside the combustion chamber, ethylene is burned in nitrogen trifluoride. This reaction produces excited fluorine radicals, which are then brought into con contact with a mixture of helium and deuterium gas. The deuterium reacts with the fluorine producing excited molecules of deuterium fluoride. These undergo simulated emission line in the weapon's optical resonator, generating the beam. A series of intelligent lenses then focuses and directs the beam to the aiming point and even corrects for minor movements by the shooter or the target. Cool. The deuterium waste gas is rammed through a custom-designed high-pressure filtering system which, which catches all toxic molecules before expelling the remaining harmless vapor back into the atmosphere. This is some Orson Scott card shit right here. <laughs> nice writing. The filter needs to be replaced regularly, but we've designed the system to make this easy and painless. The filter system is somehow damaged during the course of an operation. The weapon will immediately stop functioning in order to prevent contamination. The prototype we built is unfortunately not yet ready for full-scale production, since more refining and bal balancing is required for real-world combat. I've submitted, I've submitted new proposals to your inbox for the principal ideas we've drawn up, so that's the aerial cannon, I think. Let me know when you want us to start working on them, Commander. Okay. So, um, where were we? Yeah, intercepting that bugger. So let's go. Cool. Not cool. They've landed before we could get a beat on them. So, uh, let's start here. Oh, wait, wait. Saving. So we need more faster craft. So there you go. Enter. Good luck, Commander. Bring our soldiers back alive. Kill all the aliens. Okay, let's do this. A uh, very small map. There's a salmon right there. So let's see if one of our snipers could get him. Assault rifle. 
assault rifle. Oh man. Um seven, six. Ooh, is he gonna fire? And let's see if we can get him aim shot. 43%. Let's have him kneel. And uh, wait. Aim shot. 51%. That's good enough. Oh, fucker. Shit. Okay. Ah. Uh, Man, that hurt. So that's one thing to note. We shouldn't do aim shots at the aliens because it's going to trigger their reaction fire. Because aim shot consume 16 t 16 TUs, and in part four, I've explained how um, these things work. So I'm going to have to throw a smoke grenade just to keep that one from dying. So let's lob it right here. The fuck. Okay, cool. Okay, so I think we're safer now. And let's have him move up. Oh, we can't move him right there, so... Uh, dang it. Okay, enemy spotted. Okay, no problem. You can take care of that guy with the other ones. Let's have him move here. No reaction fire, he's got a shotgun. I don't think he can hit anything at this range. So let's have him walk here just to make way for our other uh, long range specialists. And let's have him kneel. Um. Snapshot for eight. Yeah, sure. Five round burst for seven. So I have no idea how long this smoke will last. Got a flashbang, inventory, smoke grenade again. Yeah, sure, why not? Or aim shots. Can we hit him? Eighty percent. For 20 man but I think he's going to fire so um 
what I'm going to do is have this guy throw a smoke grenade and then let's have it roll right um, here there you go and then um, How much? 24, so we can just move 6. Um, that won't make him hit the side of the fuselage, right? Aim shot. So scratch one salmon, I think. And let's have this guy. Um, hmm. So yeah, I think it, it dropped a curved blade right there. I think that's a bug. How could we see a curved blade when you've got a smoke grenade spewing stuff up? Let's have this guy move here. And then uh, he can't crouch anymore. And let's have a grenade here cover our unarmored rocket toting guy. 21. Can still move. Yeah, sure. There you go. And okay. Turn finished. Okay, so thanks for the tip, CFO AI farm users. <laughs> it's all troll and Danina Max. Shout out to those guys. Made my life easier so it's my turn and damn it so question if I use a flashbang now and there's so waste in all the smoke I don't think my troops can be blinded by the resulting flash right right so we'll test a theory and hope that this game is as realistic as it's in all its aspects I mean so yeah lob uh, did it? nope yay so we found a combo awesome combo okay we'll have him Mm, move up here and uh, I hope that alien is blinded we are about to find out six seven four five yep face there Neil and 25 uh, 22 yeah sure oh man he's sneaky. I forgot to make him stand up oh okay so maybe we could zoom just full auto 7 round burst 28% g damn it um, twenty-eight percent. 
should I? 18, 7, so I'm going to have two. Um, okay, sure, why not? Fuck it. Uh, there you go. So, definitely that thing wasn't uh, blinded by the flashbang, maybe. Um, he didn't get a line of sight to it, lucky bastard. So we now ha have, what, several wounded. Um, yes, he's walking while crouching again, how careless of me. Gee, damn it. So let's have this guy unholster his medikit and let's have him move up here so he can heal these two. Nineteen. Okay, let's crouch face here. That bugger is still alive, or what the? F it's just standing, right? He just dropped his weapon, but still alive, or I think this is a bug. I don't know. Uh, let's have this guy move out of the smoke. And yeah, he really is still alive. Gee, damn it! So I don't think he has any weapons left. So um, let's do um, aim shot. I think that definitely is a bug. Okay, it's dead, so... <laughs> okay, so devs, this is something you should look out for. It's, it's kind of doing some yoga thing. So I just wasted, what, 20 turn units right there. I think this is a very bad team distribution. We've got heavy weapons here and none over here and these guys can't do overwatch so <laughs> big mistake right there. So I'm going to have him reload and maybe just go here just so he can take cover. Oh whoa Rapper. Um, hide. And let's see if you can get him. Uh, aim shot. Impact forty three per cent. Man. There's a chance that it's going to yeah hit the plane, so let's have a move here. Aim shot impact 43. How many turn units? 18. Uh, this is just enough. So yeah. Peace. Ah. Oh. There you go. So maybe one or two more. Then we're home free. So I'm um, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. What is this guy doing? Okay, Overwatch. Um, 
7 and 8. So, yep, ending my turn. So he's somewhere over here, I think. So, who is damaged the most? 74, 62, 58. Okay, so let's have him walk here. First aid. Dude, it's just one needle. <laughs> These guys have faced down several alien attacks and medics heal, heal them. They go, ah! What the hell? Uh, okay, reaction fire. It's 8 right, so um, it's 29. We should consume how much? 9 plus. Um, 9 plus 2, that would be 11. So yeah, let's just move him here. So he can have... Two reaction fire. Um, a stupid plant. Okay, so let's have him cover this arc and hope he can hit whatever may come through this angle. Nothing to do, nothing to do. These guys do not have Overwatch. Abilities Cause their reaction fire is too expensive at 15 So yeah, let's have him stay there and This guy should hide, he's not armored So yeah, let's end our turn Okay, there he is Oh man. Please don't die. Okay, zero casualties for the win. And flashbang. Here we have flashbang. So look away. Look away, look away. And um, row. Ah, fudge. Fail. Okay. So let's see, where is he going to? Um, if I go here. And fire. That's 17%. Damn it. Um, 
um, eight. So if I kneel, ah, oh shit, I might as well hide. Damn it, damn it all. Crap. Trees, lots of trees. Gee, damn it. Um, let's have him run here. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's safe. And impact. Let's see if we can get him with a back blast. I don't think that phased him. Damn it all. Okay, so let's walk here away from his line of fire. Okay, let's have our rocket launcher guy move up here. 24, so we can only move 6. And let's see if we can get the guy. I really don't think this game allows for a back blast mechanics. So um, here's the last try, the theory. Nope. So yeah, defo. No luck right there. No joy. Let's have him. Throw a smoke grenade. Um, lob right here, maybe. Okay, cool. So now we can go here without any threats of us getting ah oh, shit <laughs> forgot about the um auto stand feature again not working it's not working here's another try to flashbang toss A lob. Right there. Ah, sh shoot. Let's hope we've blinded him, though. Okay. Ending our turn. These two are going to provide rear guard duty. And now he's gone. So I think that's the only alien left, definitely. He's not there anymore.
Okay, so I think it's safe to charge in. 15. And reaction fire. Nope. No one there. Twenty eight. Yeah, sure. Okay, there he is. Snapshot, 14, if we make him kneel, 17%, I'll take that, damn it, another 8, yeah sure, ah, loser, okay, have him reload. And then let's have him go here. And then in the next turn, we're going to make him go here and maybe we can provide a support for our other troops by covering this area. I mean, if these spot the aliens, I mean, that Taman go here, I'm going to have our rocket launcher guy go here and take him from this angle. Okay, ending our turn. Ah, fuck. Oh, hell no. I misclick. God damn it. Okay. I'm screwed. Okay, no choice. Man, this is some fucked up shit. Nice. Nice. Still alive. Crapper. Fuck. Oh, Woo Let's move here. And then full auto. Mother f... F. <laughs> gotcha. I think that was the last of them. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, um. Aliens killed four. Phalanx survivor, all of them. Civilians killed four. Oh, man. 
we failed to save all of them. Ah, uh, okay. So please, oh my god, there are a lot of content countries. So we have to please these guys. Eight thousand. Who's the highest bidder? Eight three zero six eight two nine four. So let's sell it to the Greater European Union. Okay, and we still got another uh, crash site. We'll cover that in part six. So if you like this video, guys, please like and subscribe. It would go a long way to supporting this LP. And yeah, I'll see you in the next vid where we will take care of this uh, landed UFO number six. And I think we have enough funds and em employees, I mean candidates, to um, open up a new base. We'll do that in the next video. So this has been Retro Burn. Stay cool, stay frosty. And oh, if you want in-depth information about this game, please please see my description, the description box below. It contains a link to my 5,000 word review about UFO alien invasion. So yeah, this has been Retroburn. Stay cool, stay frosty.